Hey everybody, welcome back to the Martell and Friends podcast. My name is Angel Martell. I've successfully fixed and flipped over 650 houses in the last 10 years across multiple markets. And now I help other people do the same thing with my company, Flip System. Today, we're sitting down with Connor and Victor who are Flip System advisors, and they've invested in real estate on their own as well. So I'm hoping that you get to learn and hear from their story and their experience about investing in real estate. So thank you for coming on the podcast today, boys. Yes, sir. What's no up? problem, man. How's it going? Phenomenal. Just another day in paradise out here. Good. Truly. Good. Welcome back to LA, bro. Thank you. <laughs> we missed God. you. No. He doesn't miss us. No. <laughs> no. Uh, so, Victor, let's talk about you, about your real estate investing, because Connor's podcast already is live, so people know a little bit about him, but for you, Quite the performance like, on that one, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> for you, like, tell everybody a little bit about yourself um, and your real estate investing um like experience before you learned about flip system before meeting me all that kind of stuff but like um tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your real estate investing background yeah so <clears throat> i mean really start with my fitness training business so um basically i built that up and obviously the clientele in la they, they have uh, some some capital and so i've always I've always like picked their brain on like where are you putting your money and all that and uh essentially one of my clients who's a, a doctor he uh, was investing in the Midwest at the time. He had like <clears throat> probably a dozen properties like in Michigan, oh, wow. um, as well as other places. But I was more attracted to the Midwest, you know, when he was talking about it, because I was like, that's a price point I can afford, right? Yeah. So uh, I knew I wasn't gonna invest in LA, but I knew I always wanted to be in real estate ever since reading the classic Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So um, yeah, with, with that, I basically like weaseled my way into a deal. He, t he told me he was about to buy another property. This was probably like, 2017 um it was 55k purchase price and he just buys small cash he doesn't like he just buy, buy some turnkey cash and so i literally weaseled my way into buying 30 percent of that so that was the capital that i had at the time wow and uh did that and literally the first year was like the greatest year of my real estate career <laughs> it's like n never missed a payment every like the rent roll was perfect like literally not one single issue so i'm sitting here thinking <laughs> real estate's the easiest thing ever like what am i doing like wow. you know and so but i also had no idea about like funding or anything so i thought i literally had to build capital enough yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to buy all these properties cash. in cash yeah so i i mean that's like i'll start i'll just pause for the cause there and just say like man if i knew about lending like hard money lending like be years ago yeah i'd be in the, in your freaking seat <laughs> and you'd be interviewing i'd be interviewing you um but but yeah so um so yeah i, I got that turnkey and then again it was just like was like a slow process because i'm trying to like build up yeah, capital cash, yeah. yeah um so yeah from there i was like I, I don't know why, but I like took a back seat again of just kind of like seeing how it was gonna go. And by, by the time I wanted to like jump in more like with a full head of steam, of course, like it was around the COVID COVID years, mm -hmm. right? Which everything was just going bonkers. Like yeah. there was there was a year that I literally was trying to get into a deal like harder than I had ever in the past, and it was just like you know just getting priced out of everything. And yeah. I actually almost bought a turnkey off of um, I, I was under contract if you remember I oh was, yeah that's yeah, right and then i couldn't get lending because i've always been self-employed that's right that's and right it was like a whole whole you know hassle with with that um so got yeah dropped that that turnkey winded up getting a kind of turnkey property at the time but i it needed to do some rehab yeah. and that's when i learned the lesson of like your team on the ground really yeah. matters because essentially i just had a project manager that was horrible at uh, her job. She was, you know, telling me all the rehabs were supposed to be done within like probably 45 days. It literally took her, <laughs> I don't even remember. It must've been like three months uh -huh. to, to just get it up to, up to speed and actually, um, you know, get the rehab done. So it was rent ready. So we had to like move out uh, one tenant and do that. So anyways, it was at that point where I was like, oh wow, like, you can't just like cold call someone yeah. and then believe what they say, yeah. you know, um, in terms of like their their efficiency. So, but right around that time, I literally met you in LA, and uh, if you remember, I remember yeah, yeah, the meetup in Santa actually, Monica. Pretty funny. That it's funny because I, I swear like that meeting is the reason I'm sitting here and like working with you, and it's just pretty wild. Like it's one of those things where you look back and you're like, that was such a little moment yeah. that honestly changed a lot. And actually, it's crazy. My memory is super on point with this. I, it was a rainy day, I remember, and I didn't want to go. 
I was like, like it, it was on my calendar, and I'm yeah. like, ugh, like a real estate meetup on a rainy day. You know, when it rains in LA, it's like yeah, snow. Yeah. It's like, dude, we're like, <laughs> we're like hibernating. No know? one's going anywhere. Exactly. <laughs> and so, but anyway, I went there, met you and your beautiful girlfriend, and was like, yo, these are, this is fam, you know? And I just was like, Antoine, be my friend. Actually, <laughs> if I recall, you hit me up on Insta, and I was like, what's this guy doing? Hit me up on, on IG. And then you were like, bro, good to meet you. And I was like, Oh my God, like, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just uh, became boys from there. I know I, I booked a couple mentorship calls with you, like one off ones, but oh wow, yeah. I don't know if that answered your question, but crazy. Well, no, thanks for the recap for sure. Yeah. So, you bought that one turnkey with your one of your clients from your gym, mm -hmm. and then after that, you kind of waited, everything went kind of like kosher, like amazingly well for those that first couple years, and then COVID hit, you tried to get in. And then when was when did you come and meet me at that meetup? Right after I <clears throat> backed out of that turnkey with you, and then I bought another turnkey. That was one that needed work. Got it. Um, so I did get that one. It just was. Is it was that in like twenty twenty one? Probably around that twenty twenty one twenty twenty two. Yeah. Ish. Okay. Yeah. And then I actually did a seller finance deal. I got another turnkey under my belt. Yeah. So at that time, yeah, I had three, but. You know, I, I think I thought of it a lot differently and I was also like thinking everything was gonna go the same way yeah, it did yeah. the first year. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is really not as uh <laughs> as uh, great as it seemed, you know, in exactly. terms of just like it's so slow and so that's yeah. when I was like, I need to like get into some sort of uh, repeatable process. Yeah, yeah, exactly exactly. So Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I mean Connor Connor, same thing too. I think you looked at buying turnkey rentals as well when you first started. Yeah, I was looking uh, on Martel Turnkey back in like 2019, I think, and I actually booked a call with your mom, and me oh, and her talked. We love a Lynn call. <laughs> yeah. just, Lynn, Lynn's can we great. just take a moment for Lynn's Lynn? Lynn's great. <laughs> yeah, me and my ex at the time were looking at doing something and like seeing like the numbers and what that all looked like. I mean, I think it definitely would have been even smarter and more lucrative, obviously, in, in during COVID, because uh, yeah. as the rates went down, it just made the properties cash flow more. Yeah. But then, you know, uh, when we first were looking at it, we just didn't have the, I think, the right lens that we're looking at the deal, we're thinking like, oh, 250, 300 bucks, but it's like the appreciation, the longevity, and then also how that can change as interest rates change. Yeah, interesting. So Martel Turnkey, for those that don't know, you can go to martelturnkey.com, but essentially what that website does and what it has is turnkey rental properties for sale that are already cash flowing. So house has been renovated, property manager in place, tenants in place, you can essentially buy it, get a loan on it and make money the next month. So the houses are ready to go cash flowing already. We even hook you up with lenders as well. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. So you guys now both work at flip system. Yes, sir. What made you guys, cause you guys, that's why I wanted to have you both on the same time. You guys both have your own like businesses. You guys are very entrepreneurial. Uh, you should hear the Geico story. Oh, I heard um, it. I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> and then what made you guys want to join flip system because you guys already do have businesses like why would you want to work at a company why would mm -hmm. you want to work at a company like flip system and like what made you guys both make that jump to come and work here you want me to set it off you started off by the well I'll, I'll say i'll say this first I, I i honestly originally thought of it as like don't don't let this hype you up and give you a big head but i was like let me i i, I do want to be around greatness and like i figured closer i am to you and and what you have going on I figured it would grow me. That was like one of the main reasons. I'm just like, this is just an opportunity uh, to be in a new space, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and grow in the real estate world. So it was mainly that. It wasn't even like necessarily like a money play for me. Um, and yeah, you're right. I'm not like a, a W-2 guy, right? But I think too, after talking with you, it seemed like you were gonna give a lot of autonomy, you know, mm -hmm. in a lot of areas. And so. I'm like, screw it, man. I love having conversations with people talking about real estate. And honestly, it was pretty applicable um, to kind of what I was doing with, with fitness in terms of, you know, the idea of a fitness trainer, at least a good one, is that I meet with you to assess like your individual needs, capacity, and like what you're looking to do and then create a uh, program that's going to be individualized mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I would be able to tell you quickly if I can help you or, and if we're a good fit, and it's the same is true with, with what we have going on, right? It's, this isn't for everybody. Like yeah. if people are just looking, you know, for a passive investment and want to, you know, just enjoy, uh, just to be completely passive, then it's like, go, go down the syndication route. Like yeah. this is not for you, you know, yeah. this takes some effort. So, um, yeah, I would say one to just kind of 
get enter a new space with with a you know awesome dude like yourself and then also uh talk about real estate all day man love I, it. I can do it all day well thank you for the compliment yeah. connor what about your we compliment have, <laughs> what about the compliment I love <laughs> it. we have very similar paths and i think also that's why me and vic connect like him having his own fitness business my basketball business like it's kind of similar like um you know you're in sales like all day long and you're marketing your own business you know all day long and so like i do the same thing where i meet with clients i go over their goals i try to figure out what they're trying to do i tell them i have a very different type of method of you know training this is the path this is how it can work to get there and i'm going to show you the end result of like where we're going and so it's kind of like similar in that sense where it felt like there's some alignment there of already what i've done now when it comes to like actually working with flip system it's kind of like same with with you like after i went through the process and i got my first deal uh, I still had time because it only took like three and a half or yeah, three and a half, five hours of work a week, you know? So I was like, okay, so I don't really have to spend that much time doing this. Yeah. I still have my basketball business. I still have nothing to do from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. <laughs> I was like, I, I literally want something to do. And I'm just a, such an entrepreneur Because you were heart. coaching kids too, right? Yeah. And they had school. And exactly. Like so, and then they usually have after school basketball or programs or whatever. So like my business really doesn't start till after five. So yeah. I literally coach five to eight Monday through Friday. Yeah. And, um, and so I was just like, okay, so like, what can I do during that time? And I'm all about MMAs, money making activities, right? So I was just like, I mean, what is the fighter? <laughs> I know. So like, I was like, what can I do that's gonna be, you know, worth my time that I also enjoy? And then I saw you post, you're, you know, looking for sales advisors. And I was just like, you know what? I love real estate. I get to, I'm already a student of this. I get to talk to people every day about my own experience and help them with that. And then, I'm going to say it too, Vic. I want to kind of be around greatness. I was like, the more I can be around Antoine and learn from him and see, you know, what we're doing from the inside out, I just thought it'd be a really good fit for me. So it kind of checked all my boxes from a sense mm -hmm. of what it is I've done in the past, what I've already done as a student and that kind of alignment there. And then the autonomy, like, you know me, I love to travel. Like last year I was in Spain for a month and I was able to still work. Right. So it yeah. just kind of like fit all my boxes with everything I was looking for. And just like, because of my own experience and how well it went, I just wanted to share that with people and be basically help them take that leap. If it fit them, you know, yeah, to work yeah. with us to go and do this. Cause sometimes it's a scary, you know, feeling, uh, whenever you're trying to do something, that's a big shift career shift or anything. It's like, even when someone probably comes to you and is like sure. wanting to go into fitness, yeah they might be kind of scared like hey i've never figured this out before hey maybe i don't feel comfortable in my body like all this stuff and you got to kind of show them the path and guide them to mm -hmm. it to where they feel more comfortable making that decision yeah. you know what's funny is i feel like on a lot of our calls and i'm sure you can relate it, it's more about coaching mindset than it is anything else yeah. because you can see the same thing two different ways yeah you know what i mean so it's like there is a right and a wrong perspective right on, on yeah. things like especially on problems the people that see problems as unsolvable well <laughs> yeah. that's, can't, can't well, can't, you. that's it then it's yeah. unsolvable you know yeah, and then leave. yeah and then what entrepreneurs do is we come in and we solve problems so yeah it's more about like coaching up like the mindset behind you know doing yeah and all i think this. too like you guys said it like well you guys both said it but like it's not for everybody yeah like when when you go to a trainer it's like i can't help you go to the next guy whatever somebody like wants to learn basketball on a com I don't know, completely different way and you're like no sorry man i can't help you or you're four for two yeah, yeah four for two like <laughs> buddy go play golf you know yeah. so i feel like with flip system too like and real estate investing in general too not just about us but real estate is not a perfect game for sure like if you want something perfect go put it in a high interest savings account yeah. make your five percent and go you know go to sleep mm-hmm Stock market too is also like a different appetite. It's like, I'm gonna have a diverse stock market portfolio and make my 7% or S&P. It's like, yeah. all right, cool, go and do that. You're not gonna make any monthly cash flow or, but you're, you'll build wealth over time, just sure. slow as shit. So I don't know, there's there's definitely a a type of person who like comes in with Flip System and destroys mm -hmm. it as well. And it's mm -hmm. typically like the self-starters, the people that have like tried it before, know the pains of doing it yourself. Right, and right. then they come in and they're like, wow, I can like email this person or show up to a call every day and yeah. like get my question answered. This like, finally. Yeah, no, you, you nailed it. I think anybody who hasn't tried to do a deal on their own doesn't fully understand the value of flip system. Yeah. Honestly, like, because if you haven't tried to build your team, find a deal, if you're just like, oh, I was thinking about doing this or like uh, Amazon shop, it's like, oh dear, like, hit, me, hit me up <laughs> in a couple months, bro. Things, like, I'm not even gonna talk to you about it because you have no, you know, no context, that, you know? Yeah. And, and kind of even to that, to elaborate more, like, yeah, I was so shocked. I remember when I bought my first house and I, I texted you, I was like, I closed on the deal. Like, now what? I was like, and you're like, you own the house, Connor. Like, what, what, are, what are you talking about? Like, now what? And I was like, well, what happens next? And then you're like, well, it closed, right? I was like, yeah, that was on a Friday. Monday morning, I'm literally waking up to texts and videos 
from my project manager, they already finished demo. Cause again, I'm three hours behind. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like 11, 1130 there. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like what just happened? Like, this is crazy. And so yeah. like, they kind of, like I say, they like drag you to the finish line to success. Yeah. Yeah. And then even to your point, not only can you email customer support or whatnot, like they literally teach you, you guys teach us exactly like how to do something where it's like, oh, you submit an offer, you tag the right people, then like they handle everything else from yeah. the title to the contractor to the project manager, property manager, realtor. And so it's like kind of like a more well-oiled machine where like, I wouldn't know what the hell to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't think people think of all the things that go into it, which is to your point, people that have never done real estate. They're yeah. like, well, I could figure this out. It's like, honestly, man, be my guest. Go yeah. give it a yeah. try. And I know in six months you'd be like, okay, what 100%. the hell? Didn't you tell and somebody? I was about to tell you that that story. So in August, there's a guy that I talked to, Naquan Hook. This dude's the man. Chill, I don't know if I don't know about that. We'll go beep, beep. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's awesome, though. Why I say it? Now customer info over yeah. here. <laughs> His social security is like, well, brother, chill out. <laughs> so basically, we talked back in, in August, and uh, he, you know, was like, oh, well, I talked to a real guy. They said I could figure this out on my own. So I'm just going to, like, do this on my own. And I was like, really? And he lives in New York, and he's going to invest in Detroit. And I was like, okay, fine. And that was in August. Um, I said, honestly, like, you know, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. I just really feel like we can help you, but totally fine. I let it go. All of a sudden, mid-December, I'm getting a text and he goes, hey, I want to join Flip System. Like, it wasn't even a question even at that point. It's just like, wow, I want to join. four months later. Yeah. And I was like, hey, like, what happened? He goes, so I bought the house in Detroit. The realtor told me she's going to take me to the contractor, told me she doesn't do all oh, this yeah, stuff. 100%. And nothing happened. Yeah. It's been sitting for, like, two months. Like, I just literally need a team. I need someone to come in there. Like, can Detroit be my market? Can you get me to the team and start helping me do all this? And I was and like, like yes, oh, a thousand is. percent. That's yeah. what we do. Yeah. And he goes, I know. He goes, honestly, it was just because, like, the only reason why I came back was because of our conversation and how nice you were and all this. And, like, like, I just feel like you're going to take care of me. And I was yeah. like, yeah. And it but, was just a quick call. But honestly, like, good on him because I think most yeah. people we I tell to go do that. Hell I'm like, no. dude, you're going to be 60 years old and be like, oh, I should have gotten to real estate. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. so most people fall in line with just talking shit about it. And it's yeah. like, man, exactly. you know, you got to take action ultimately. But I think, too, like Martel Turnkey, when I – so when I started Martel Turnkey, I was selling all the houses. Mm -hmm. I was posting on Instagram. Yeah, people would come and, like, they would book a call on my page. They would book a call on the website. It was me taking the sales calls. So I sold hundreds of these fucking houses. Like you were terrible at them, by the way. You always told me, like, no, nah, don't buy it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> See, but that, <laughs> but that was my fucking thing. Yeah. No, I'm smart. serious, though. Like, people would be like, oh, like, why should I buy this house or whatever? I'm like, if you're here for me to convince you to buy real estate – don't like just go and buy real estate on your own. Go, go stumble on yourself, lose 20 grand and then call me back in a couple of months. Yeah. And people were like, <laughs> like it was like the best sales tactic ever. And yeah. it also like saved me so much fucking time. Cause people would come and be like, like, how do I know that it's renovated to my standard? And I'm like, buddy, mm -hmm. you never invest in real estate before. I've done 400, maybe I've done 200 houses just like this. I've sold hundreds of these p deals to, mm -hmm. and I have the best property manager that, the property's le leased out already. The property's already fully renovated. You can just buy it. I'll connect you with a lender and you can just use my team and go and like manage that property thereafter. Mm. Oh yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. I might just want to like do it myself or like you guys are selling it for like what it's worth. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we're selling it for like it's market value. Yeah. I want to buy below market value. I'm like, okay, cool. So what you're going to do is leave my website, go on Zillow, make a bunch of offers, find a realtor that's going to find a property manager, cold call them, go watch my content on Instagram and then call me in six months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know how many people would come back to me and be like, I didn't do shit. Or like, yeah. I tried, I cold called 10 realtors, 10 property managers and I didn't do anything and I couldn't buy a house. It was like, real estate's tough to do it yeah. on your own out of state, especially. For sure. Like, that also comes back though to mindset when me and Vic talk about like a lot of our calls are about mindset where like there's so many people that want a hundred thousand coming in a year in real estate or they want to invest or this like people just talk all the time but there's a reason why most people don't do anything because most people are sheep no yeah. most people actually don't take action Bro. most people are literally just the Derek doing Shivers, nothing D Derek Shivers has this line I use on pr pretty much every call I'm like if information was the answer everyone would be millionaires with six packs <laughs> and it's like, literally. bro, that is so true. Literally. Like, and, and even on top of it, you can take a step further. Like, look, there's like, why does 1% of the world own 99% of the wealth? And then 99% of the world owns 1%. Mm -hmm. Because most people are comfortable just staying in their comfort zone. Yeah. So they say they want all these things, but they're actually not going to take the action. And like, that's really our job is to kind of show them a different perspective to allow them to make an educated choice and take that action as opposed to just talk about it. Because 
they might be 40 at the time, but yeah, like you're saying, they might be 60 and they're still in the same spot. And they're like, man, oh, if only I listened to that Vic guy and I actually took action and did Dude, this I 20 swear, years I ago. I think we're going to haunt these guys' dreams. Some of the, some of the, I'm I've, hoping I've so, coached man. up people pretty hard of like, listen, man, this is not going to change my life as much as it's gonna change exactly. yours. So I don't even care if it's with us, but you need to take action. Do something. Do freaking something. And I know once they hang up that call, yeah. they're just not gonna do anything. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow at the event, like I, I'm gonna go up there and talk for a couple minutes, five, 10 minutes. The only thing I'm talking about is taking action. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm talking about is just try it. Right. Dude, we're, it's not like, oh, okay, I'm gonna buy a turnkey rental from Martel Turnkey, or I'm gonna go buy a house on Zillow and my whole life is gonna change 180, I'm gonna be poor and homeless. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, just try it. You're yeah, on this call, okay. you have enough money, you're gonna be okay. Go try it, be like, I hate real estate. I'm like, great, yeah. go do something, like check, go do an right, Amazon right, right. FBA store. It well, gets screwed don't do over. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> well, Try remember trucking Blanca, company. Yeah. Blanca too. So she. Yes. Just, I talked oh, to her. Did yeah. you hear her story? Oh, dude. No. Gnarly. What? Did you have a sales call with her? Mm -mm. Okay. So she wanted to join Flip System. She got on a call with somebody. And then she decided to not join Flip System and do real estate and go do Amazon FBA. Mm -hmm. Or the week before she had started an Amazon FBA. Then she yeah. saw one of our ads. Then she scheduled a call to speak with one of you guys. And... She decided to, she was like, oh, I already put 50 grand in Dude, this Amazon FB. It was more. more. It was yeah. more. But I let's, know, let's, but let's, we'll just let's start there. Oh business. my God. Yeah. I have to bleep, bleep yeah, her out. Bleep her name out too. Yeah. Okay, she, and she, did she told you what happened? Yes. Yeah, bro. But like, but that happens like all the time. Like I had <laughs> another smile friend. smile off your face, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, this poor girl. Lost. Like people are putting Okay, but what happened then? You guys may, maybe have more information. People are putting full I, I salaries okay to buy to these. Really yeah, people are putting no, full we'll salaries to buy these like Amazon FBA stores getting promised the world and then it's like a scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So not they just ran away with her money essentially. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what I think she told me. Yeah. And I think 60K. Yeah, 60, 65 is what she said. Yeah. Oh my God. And then she she didn't want to join Flip System because she was like, I don't want right. to see And I was going to say, not that not to get on a big tangent here, but I'm like, it's so annoying that people associate us with yeah. like these yeah. shit like that. I'm like, oh my God. We have so much more social proof and like yeah. we have agreements. We have all these things in place that like make it as like safe as, as possible. Yeah. And like, when they throw us in the like you're a scam FBA store, I'm like, dude, please, like any any other objection is fine, <laughs> but, but that one, like I don't even have the yeah. patience to to talk to you about how illogical that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's true. You never be like, like how many? Uh, well, he knows a couple billionaires, you know. Oh yeah. So how many billionaires yeah. do you know that have like I started with an Amazon FBA store? You know, like nobody does. Right. And, and it's also. We're also, last thing, Flip System is also a guide in the real estate world. Amazon FBA is like, here, buy this, and like, good luck, hope yeah. it works for yeah. you. Like, here, well, buy they, yeah. this like pre-done product, essentially. So we're mm -hmm. like, they don't learn shit. That's, that's the main thing. They don't learn shit, even if an Amazon FBA store works, you don't fucking learn anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, we have like a tortilla warmers on Amazon, and it makes seven grand a month. <laughs> And then, like three months later, tortilla warmers like aren't a thing anymore. Aren't a thing anymore. Like bicycle pizza cutters, and like there's just selling weird ass shit. That was always my thing when it comes to Shopify. Any of those things, there's too many steps yeah. to get to a goal. And it was just like I felt like I had no control. How am I going to pick the right product? How am I going to market it the right way? How am I going to do all this? What's my you know marketing budget? All that. Yeah. And so it was like when it comes to like I just circling back like towards real estate. I just feel like you have more control. You have more control. You understand the process. You see what's going on. You own the damn property. You know what's going on. And on top of that, when it comes to all the things that we hear about, the scams, just that and the other, people scared of getting burned. I think this is the thing that what I have seen with most successful people in my life versus not is most successful people are willing to take the risk and they're okay with getting burned and they'll go again. Yeah, and exactly. then they'll go again and they'll go again. And th sure. That's entrepreneurship. Right. Yeah. Like you see all the memes. It's up and down. It's like one but day you're on cloud ten, and the next day you're like, but it's oh my life god, I'm losing too, my too though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. dude, it's like some people, like you said, like some people are just like, I'm just gonna stay at this like level of life, and the only Comfort. thing I'm gonna, only thing I'm gonna take a risk on is going and visiting a new city on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, can we just say that's okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah honestly, nothing wrong totally with it. fine. Like, if, if just some days content. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I fucking wish I worked at Starbucks. So like, <laughs> <laughs> me, yeah, and, yeah. me and someone will joke about that. Yeah. Like, dude, I wish my, I wish like I didn't have Slack messages at four in the morning, and right. then, like, no, you never turn off. Yeah, you, you, like, exactly. Yeah, that's like sometimes you just wish you had like a like 
two dogs, two little dogs, <laughs> and you worked at Starbucks, and you just like yeah, didn't have totally. anything to worry. You know, whatever. Sure. Everybody still has stuff to worry sure, about, sure, but sure. it's just like a just completely different life than, than one where you do like take risks, go yeah. public speaking, go do all this scary yeah, do shit. all this stuff you don't want to do. Exactly. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. But that's also why you, you know, I mean, again, different quality of life for everybody, but yeah. it's why you get to do cooler shit than a normal person would because yeah. you've taken risk and, mm-hmm. and put yourself out there. So, yeah. um, but I mean, just to, just to close that loop of like with everything about, you know, joining like different me- methods of, different methods of doing things. Like it's like the, at the end of the day, maximizing your upside while minimizing your downside is gonna be the best entrepreneurial like choice to make mm-hmm. in terms of, I guess, just mentorship, you know what I mean? Like, like this is scary, real estate is scary enough. I, you know, I think Flip System just makes it way less scary yeah. to jump in because you've already literally done everything. And mm-hmm. so it's just more of like a plug and play uh, system there. Yeah. But, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like that's why Amazon FBA started it because you can't duplicate it. Like Amazon does not allow you to. It was something around that. That's why a whole thing Amazon FBA started because you weren't able to have like multiple LLCs or some shit like that. Or I don't know. It was like mm-hmm. a weird thing that they had, and then they were just like they had to like sell these little side businesses they had made on Amazon or mm. or I don't know. It was something weird like that to why Amazon FBA started and why people started selling these Amazon FBA packages. Oh, I see. Um, But for like complete opposites, like real estate, it's like, here's a team that's actually done it. They're working with other clients. Here's a realtor that's like sold 500 houses last year. Here's a title company that's done this. Very tangible proof. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Instead of like, here, we tried this, but we legally can't keep going. So here you go. Go buy it and like, (laughs) good luck to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. I think something also really interesting when it comes to like, our model and what we do, right, is um, there's like, you know, a million ways to make money in real estate. And you can go wholesale, you can do turnkey flips, you can do retail, you can do luxury fix and flips. Like, I'm curious with you, like, what made you want to do micro flipping? Because like, that is what we are also talking about with people so much is like, yeah. this is our strategy, might not be a fit for you, and that's okay. Yeah. But this is where we found success was like the, you know, lower barrier to enter. I guess even for you too, like, yeah, kind of more on that, like what made you want to get into micro flipping? And we had a couple coins out. to rub together. So it's, <laughs> it's the only place you can afford. No, I'm just kidding. There are a million ways to invest in real estate. And I think that, that one, that's one of the reasons why people come and they want to learn about investing with us, joining flip system and stuff and why they don't do it because there are so many freaking options. And I think for the last eight years, I've only done that one strategy. I mean, maybe I bought like apartment buildings or tested other things or like looked at Airbnb or whatever, but the only thing that I've ever done because it, nothing could beat it was the micro flips. And the reason why, and I was on the bigger podcast podcast and I said the same shit to them too. And it was, it's just the least amount of risk with the highest return and with the most amount of exit strategies. Yeah. And like, even after I did, even after I did a couple hundred of them, it still made the most amount of sense to continue doing that instead of going and doing something else and trying something different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It still made the most amount of sense. Like for example, all right, let's say you flipped 30 houses in Cleveland. Then you're like, oh, now I want to try doing luxury fix and flips. It's like, okay, go run the numbers on a luxury fix and flip, fix and flip in LA. Tell me if you would fucking do that deal. Yeah. Like, I would rather do 10 times the amount of deals that I'm doing with, like, my Cleveland team that I have built up, the reputation that I have with them, the accuracy of the rehab bid, so, and the multiple exits. So it's those kinds of kinds of things. Multiple exit strategies, number one, I could buy the house, renovate it. I could sell it as a retail fix and flip, which I never really do unless I'm really stuck if I can't rent the house out pretty much is when I would just list it Mm -hmm. or I buy the house, renovate it, rent it out. And then I can refinance it, sell it, sell it on Martel turnkey, post it on another turnkey providers website that I have a relationship with, like do what I have. And then if nothing works, refinance it, pull my money out, move on to the next deal or pay my investor off, pay off the hard money lender and move on. Second Mm -hmm. thing, if your construction costs are in 20 to 40 K in the Midwest, the accuracy of your rehab bids is like, 96%. 96% Ninety-six percent. Ninety-six percent is what it has been for Martel Turnkey and for like all the deals that we had done. That's mm-hmm. the actual statistic is ninety-six percent. That's great. You go talk to these luxury fix and flippers. Like if you have any friends flipping houses in L.A., New York, Miami, they always go over. Variance is like always 20%. go. Yeah. Always. I just talked to a guy. He's he's doing a house in West Hollywood, and uh, he's supposed to profit like a million or something. It is a two-year project. 
Uh, let's just start there. And he has tons of investors. He's like, I should make 500, she should make 500, whatever, cool. But like what they got it for, all the stuff they're putting in, and then they're doing the interior design, this, and he's like, oh yeah, we're well over the budget, but it, it doesn't matter, we're gonna make a million. Like that's how he looks at it, right? Yeah. And it's just like, so he's like, oh, we're so far over it. But again, even to that point, it's a longer deal. There's so much risk. There's all the stress. It's two years that you're Interest waiting for this. Interest rate risk. Yep. Yeah. And then you're continuing to put all your money into if that and sink cash more money. It's all good. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're a normal guy that has like 50 to 100K, then yeah. you can't do that. Dude, but most of these people don't do that. All, did you do the deal all cash? I no. So. I, no. Because no. dude, even at that level, like these guys still use hard money. They still use these loans because they just, then they're like, I'm going to do four projects instead of one. Right. So like you may think, oh yeah, they're just, no, they're bleeding 10 Dude, grand a month I per would, project, 20 grand a month. sleep at month. night <laughs> knowing Legit. you owe a hundred K a month. Year, for yeah. two years. And then imagine if there's another COVID. Imagine if there's another, whatever, the government starts printing more money, the interest rates yeah. go up again. Like, dude, you have so it's much. Way too leveraged. Yeah. So much damn risk. So, for all of those reasons, that's why I just like stuck to what I was doing. And dude, like the returns are insane. You put 20 grand into a deal. Once you start raising like private money and stuff like that from friends and family, you put nothing in a deal and you walk away with 10K, 5K and you just set up a system and it's just automated. So mm. you hire one person to find the deals or if you have flip system f does it for you, essentially you don't have to yeah. hire that. But you go to the marketplace, you make some offers, you send a couple emails, you put one under contract, your hard money lender that you keep using over and over gets you better rates. And you just like set up a process like that uh, to run through it. And oh, if you're not using hard money, you probably use a private money lender. And then you can get them to fund the whole fucking deal. And they can make, you know, 8% interest instead of like a hard money lender at 12. And then that's mm -hmm. where you can like create the machine. So that's what we just started doing. Yeah. Friends and family. And, yeah. get, and raising money and they're just wiring the money and we're giving them a percentage over you know six yeah, yeah, months yeah. or a year yeah and then for those of you that are listening that don't know what a micro flip is a micro flip is essentially a flip where i don't know you would do like less than a fifty thousand dollar renovation typically it's like twenty to forty thousand dollar renovation it's going to be a small quick and easy flip it's more renovation than a lipstick on the pig it's less renovation than a luxury fix and flip. So you still have to renovate the property enough to get the value up. I hate when I say micro flip and people are like, so you're just painting, putting, yeah, yeah, painting or like putting new blinds. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, buddy, you know, 25, yeah. that'd be the most expensive blinds on earth. But <laughs> yeah, so that's what a micro flip is. Small, quick projects. The other thing about it is the time. I mean, you'd mentioned that too, but like the time of these projects for Martel Turnkey, it was on average like 110 days. Mm. So, you know, you can get it. Our fastest project was like 64 days. Bought it. Acquiring to selling? Yeah. Bought, Dang. rent out and sell? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 64. That was probably in the heat of COVID, huh? That was... Dude, you, they, they were flying off the shelves. At Martel's ranking? If, let me just pause and just say that if we had flip system during COVID... Yeah. Oh. Are you dumb? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we would have been... Bro. Everyone would have been Nobody would have... Nobody would have not joined. We would have all been millionaires. By this point. <laughs> Literally. Bro, Literally. I, I remember think that all the time. Like three and a half percent at some of these things. Like yeah. single Dude. families are cash flowing like six fifty a month. You were selling them before you even had photos up on, on Martel Turkey. Okay, you guys want to know the crazy stories? Oh shit. Oh, here we go. This, this is gonna, gonna make me hate more and more. Okay. We would put a house under contract. We would get the rehab bid. I would like shoot an email off to a couple of my investors. They would fund the deal, wire me the money, we'd close a couple days later. Mm. As soon as I, the day that I closed, I would put it up on the website, do an email, yeah. it's contract signed. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember. And I would be like, the website was like sold out, sold out, sold out. You would just have to wait and we would do a little email <laughs> and then people would like make multiple offers. We'd accept one and we'd be like, sorry, but we have a couple deals we're buying yeah, yeah. And like you can buy these houses if Before. we end up if we end yeah. up buying them and shit. We didn't even own the fucking house. Unreal. And they were like getting in line and then we were like worried about sharing the address when like we were like still under contract cuz it's kind of like uh, finicky. So we'd wait yeah. till like everything was good Closed, like we were yeah. signed. We were signed and then um just waiting on the final confirmation. We had to like delay me signing the contract because I didn't technically own it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they'd be like, "Okay, cool, send the contract," and like, you're like, like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll get get it over to you." Yeah, and I'll get like, it over to you. And like, like, I don't sign it. <laughs> and then like, because um, they wanted to review it or whatever. So I was like, "Dude, it was crazy, dude, nuts." But 
That's just one side of it. The construction during COVID was the nightmare. Oh, yeah, mm. for sure. All these cities had like, you cannot have six people or more oh in a God. house that yeah. are unmasked because like they were all unmasked because they were like doing shit or oh, well, some of them were masked if they were like painting and stuff, but they yeah. were just so hot in there. And then, so it's like, if you have, you can't have more than six people. Right. So many people got sick. Dang. Uh, a couple of like the main contractors died from COVID that we were using in Cleveland, like, yeah, it was Jeez. it was crazy. And then like these contractors too that you use for these like twenty to forty K projects, they're not big teams. Like right. it's like six guys in a truck or six guys in two trucks and they just mm -hmm. like hammer these projects out and then they have other people doing their like specialty that they'll hire, like tubbing or flooring and all that kind of stuff. So dudes, like some of these guys got sick. One of them was like bedridden or hospital ridden for months. Jeez. Like so it was great on the sales front, yeah. but like, dude, the projects in progress were like a nightmare. Like it was wow. like, also, we couldn't get any material. Yeah. That's all I was saying. Materials about were expensive and hard. Oh my to god! Get. So my brother was one of our project was our project manager in Memphis. He was managing like five GCs that we had who had their teams below them, and the price for luxury vinyl plank like tripled. We couldn't buy like caulking. Uh, you just like could not buy it anywhere or like toilets or like all this stuff that was like shipped in from yeah. China and then going to little Memphis, Tennessee, for God's sakes. Like yeah. it was just, they had no material. So they're like, yeah, we can't do this because we're waiting for the store to get a next shipment in of like caulking or like sure. stupid stuff like that. But see that, that circles back to like, there's always a problem to solve. Yeah, even, yeah, yeah. even though those were good problems, like you were freaking flying off the shelves and yeah, you yeah, still yeah. had to figure out how to solve it. Right. Yeah. But, we had a we had a funny joke at, and you'll run into this too as you start to do more but like we had a funny joke where if like if it we either had okay there's investors like your le investors or lenders there's deals um and then there's the buyers so you have the investors the 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 houses and inventory and then the buyers you only had one of those things at any given time and you had way too fucking much of it mm. so it's either way too many deals and not enough money to buy them or you had like way too much money and there was like no, no deals. deals. Yeah. Or you had so many houses and nobody wanted to buy that week. Or you had everybody ready to buy and then you yeah, had no oh, fucking inventory. inventory. Like there was, there was always this, and it, that's how it, that's how it is too. Once you get in, if you really want to start a turnkey fix and flip business, mm. and you're not just burring it, because dude, if you're burring it, you have way more fucking control because you don't have to rely on the the last piece, the buying side. And then it's just yeah. pairing money, but you can solve money issue with hard money. And then now it's just pure deals. So your business is just predicated off deals. But for us, we didn't use hard money, we used private. Right. And now we had all these different variables, but. That's sheesh. so cool. I have a question off that, because that's something I want to do. I think we've talked about this. When it comes to like the burr and doing stuff like that, was there a time you just like kept a ton? I know, like, I think yeah. you told me in private, like you had like 40 deals and just refinance all 40 at one point, and yeah. this, that, and the other. So like, I mean, was that ever something for you just creating more cash flow and doing refis and just holding like, I don't know, why didn't you hold like a hundred of them or get into multifamily and do that? And I know yeah. you, you have, but I don't know, maybe share a little about that. I do like the burst strategy. I think it's a good strategy. I think for me, I was just making so much more money. And then I started hiring people for Martel Turnkey to where it was actually a business. And this business sold. This mm. business did not refinance. I could have done it a different way. Like when I first started investing in real estate, all we did was burrs. I didn't want to deal with fucking selling and salespeople and well, salespeople, me. I didn't want to take sales calls. I didn't want to deal with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the worst employee, but I like didn't want to. And then I made a business around it. I started hiring people. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Now we have to do this. And part of the thing that was great about the business model that we had or that we have is that if a house did not sell, if we could not sell it, we can always refinance it. So refinancing was always in the back of my mind. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna like hold 300 houses in all these markets and grow a huge portfolio and cash make, flow, $20, and cash flow of $20,000 a month for like 40 houses or something. Um, so it wasn't really my book. I was more like, let me just flip as much, as I can help other people grow their portfolios. I'll use the money that I'm making to grow my own portfolio, but I'll like, I'll figure that out later essentially. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like right now I'm just building and like doing these deals and things are working. So I did eventually, once I had a chunk of change buy a couple apartment buildings. Yeah. 
So I bought, I had one point in Memphis up to 80 units. I had like five buildings, 20 unit, 11 unit, 16 unit, 24 unit. And I was like, here we go. Like, this is my, it was mostly me and my dad. We would raise a little bit of money from from friends and family and of some of our investors. But it was mostly me and my dad owned like 70 to 100% of the building. We have one now and we own 60%. So 60 to 100% of the building we owned. Uh, and then we would give away you know small percentages. That's when we were making the most amount of cash flow from having those kinds of assets. But dude, it was, we got crazy offers to sell those house, those apartment buildings, and we took yeah, it. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah. like, you posted a, a, a story. Uh, I remember, and you were just like, "Honestly, I don't know why th- these people would want to buy it for this <laughs> price." So I'm just gonna let it go, and, and you cashed out, dude. I that. numbers. I bought this apartment building, for, twenty unit building in Memphis, the first one for nine hundred k. Me and my dad only. Yeah, only me and my dad. Nine hundred thousand dollars. We bought it. We renovated for, f- let's say, four hundred thousand. So we're rolling for 1.4 with closing costs. We got an offer for $2.2 million. Yeah, I remember. And this was like 18 months later. You're like, you're like done. Let's I was do like, it. What the fuck? 800K, yeah. $800,000 in, in two years for, yeah, it was a lot of work and it was a big learning experience. But after that, and then now with COVID, with the high interest rates, dude, nothing makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Nothing makes sense. I love multifamily. Like I wish flip system into the future can be that. Like Mm, everybody starts with micro flips. You start doing this. Once you make some more money or you built a portfolio or whatever, like you can do a 1031 of your houses and we'll show you how to do the multifamily thing. Like Mm. I love it. I I think it's great. And it doesn't have to be a hundred units. It can be those little like four micro apartments. That's what I'm looking at too. And super interested. And I I love that you touched on that because a lot of clients I know about you, they, they start thinking what they, as they see the process, they start salivating and they're getting excited. Like, Oh my God, I'm going to make millions. And Oh, can I go into multifamily? And it's like, cool. Like, Multifamily is possible. That's where you end up. It's not where you start. Yeah. You want to go in the micro flips. You want to start doing this, grow your capital, and then eventually like get there. And I think that is a possibility. You know, and obviously it is. It sounds like that's something you've done yeah. yourself. And I always tell them like, hey, we can make that happen as well, just down the line. Yeah. You can call the program. Uh, what is it? Uh, micro to multi. Ooh. You micro like to that? multi. Copyright. Like that. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, on that note, just to, to summarize too, is like. The same principles you learn on the micro flips, you can obviously apply it. Dude, to, that's and, the thing. And that's the, the biggest thing. Strength training, anything is made up of like principles to follow. Yeah. And if you can get those principles, learn them, then you can apply them in yeah. any other context, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's also the big thing. 100%. And, and other markets, bring it back to where you are if you want to and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, would you rather risk? Okay. So I just ran the numbers for you. Like we bought that building with 900K, we put 300K down, 400K all in for $700,000. $700,000 of cash. Like you could go do a flicks and flip in Detroit for 22,000 bucks out of your pocket. Like, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? So it's like, like you said, like do your practice with these small $20,000 yeah. things with super low risk with multiple different exits. After that, once you're like, my team's great, my realtor's great, I've started to learn these neighborhoods, I've visited the city a couple mm-hmm. of times, I really could see a future here, I like the future of this city or this neighborhood or whatnot, those things will start coming naturally and then yeah. you'll feel way more confident to like go to the next thing, yeah. which is like learning about all the different nuances with lending, with the numbers right. for the multifamily. You don't start off on a chest press with a, with the hundos like yeah. your boy. Well, I do, right? but you know <laughs> what I mean? You, you, what are you, like 30s? Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. If you guys want to check out uh, Connor's one-on-one podcast with me and him, it's going to be below in the show notes. (laughs) If you want more insights on real estate investing, be sure to like and subscribe. See ya.